Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9, and this video is going to be the next in my weapon series. This one is going to feature Lucia, and again, this is not a character that I use a whole lot, and so I'll do my best to kind of cover her, um, you know, I guess with as much respect as I can, although I don't use her enough to probably be, you know, anywhere near an expert on her, and so... Uh, if I miss something, feel free to, to put it in my comments, and if it's something really good, I'll pin it so that everybody else can see it. So Lucia um, kind of has a mix bag of things. She's she's kind of got a little bit of everything, not a whole lot of any one particular thing, although for a while she was really good at breaching as far as elemental breaches. And looking at her weapons... Um, the, I'll just start with the one that stands out the most to me because it is amazing. Uh, Bald Eagle, I believe this came out when Sephiroth came out, which was pretty early on in the game. I think it was, I don't know, somewhere around maybe the second or third month of the game. And they released Edged Wings for Sephiroth and they released Bald Eagle for Lucia. And everybody was so into Edged Wings because it was Sephiroth. This weapon got overlooked, I think, at the time, at least by, you know, a, a good, at least by a fair amount of players. But this weapon is actually amazing. I still use it in every single one of my ice setups, mostly because I do physical ice. And if you just look, 58 physical attack, 39 ice potency. Those are amazing R abilities, especially that physical attack is very high. The C ability on this weapon is also incredibly good. What I think took away from it, at least when it first came out, and we were had, you know, we were way more limited on what weapons we had access to, and therefore you were much pickier on what you were going to pull because you also had lim more limited resources at that time. Was it the fact that it's an ice weapon, right? Everything about it is ice, but then it did physical non-elemental damage. Which I understand because it also had this breach, and that was before, you know, power creep had set in at all. But that, I think, was one of the things, like, one of the reasons I didn't value it as high when it first came out. However, the fact that at OB6 it has a high-potency ice breach is amazing. The fact that it's also an amazing sub-weapon for any ice user makes this weapon really good. Now, it does have a C ability for ice attack boost, which is really nice and still makes her viable as a breacher or utility and even sub damage dealer on any ice team uh this weapon here it's like the first weapon i go to as a sub weapon uh, many times for ice damage dealers because again it's been a lot around for a long time so it was easy for you know an initial player to ob10 and i I guess I have a lot of nostalgia about that weapon because I still remember very, very vividly when it came out. Believe it or not, the next weapon I'm going to cover here is actually Pumpkin Blaster. It was a free weapon, but still still in the running for sub weapons when I'm looking through what to put on a healer. If the healer mostly needs to heal, okay? And, you know, obviously when you're doing some content or a lot of content, you need your healer to do multiple things. But there is content still where just having a very high heal stat is really good, especially if it's heal and magic defense. The fact that it does both of these um, when you need it, it's strong. And it is something to note, although a weapon that could be picked up for free and I think, you know, makes it in a weird category because you can't wishlist it or something. But it is it is something I think is noteworthy. Coming through this list, the next really big one and one that I think still has value is Mad Minute. This was one of the best sub weapons for any physical damage team early on in the game. Um, if you can see, you know, at OB6, level 90, 23 HP, 32 physical ability potency. That was something that was really sought after because not many weapons had physical ability potency. The fact that it also gives HP and at OB10, 31 and 52, that's pretty good, and I, I think that makes this weapon still viable. It doesn't make it into a whole lot of my set, setups, but I do think it's uh, still a pretty decent weapon. As far as the C ability, 540%, not amazing, but magic attack decrease, 
I think that th this is just hands down better than Tifa's Tiger Fangs. Um, but the problem is, is do you want to use Lucia over Tifa in general? And that for me was usually no. However, this is just a, a, a solid weapon for those things. Uh, coming down here, I will note that there's several weapons uh, that I'm going to be skipping that have some merit to them, whether it's, you know, pretty decent single target, non-elemental damage or something along those lines. But a lot of them, they just, the, for the R abilities not really matching up or other reasons, uh, not really noteworthy in my book. Just want to say that, but, you know, feel free to let me know if you think I miss one. The next one, though, I do want to talk about is Serpent Eater. This is a very solid physical water damage weapon. You can see here at max tier, 790% physical water damage. That's giving it 40% over something like Maritime Sword. Uh, it also has boost water potency and HP, which makes this a great sub weapon. And, you know, when you need survivability, HP is there. I think that this is a great weapon. The fact that it doesn't have a sigil boost, though, kind of lowers it. And so, you know, a lot of times with these like characters that aren't what I call like mainline characters, right? Not people that were a big part of the story in the original Final Fantasy VII, for the most part, um, and Barrett um, until more recently. You know, they just always they always put something or, or left something off or put something on. It didn't quite make sense. And for those reasons, I think a lot of those weapons get overlooked. But if you're setting up a physical water team, uh, this is definitely still in contention. We don't have a whole lot of hard hitting physical water weapons. Uh, I know there's been some release kind of recently for like Glenn, uh, something like that, Zach. But I, th I think it's still something that that is deserves consideration. Um, coming next, we have Holiday Revolver. This came out the same uh, banner that Tifa did, or at least Maybe not the same banner, but around the same time. It's hard to remember. It was a Christmas banner. And this was the first, she was the first person to get Earth Arcanum. And so paired with this weapon, that made her the number one Earth DPS unit in the game. Quite simply. Uh, I skipped it at the time, but she's still pretty good. I mean, 800% magic Earth damage. That was another contention at the time was that Lucia was mostly physical based, like most of her weapons, especially the ones that people uh, were investing in, were physical damage, uh, our abilities, etc. And so giving it magic kind of threw people for a little bit of a loop. That was another reason I didn't go for it at the time. However, now I think there's there's plenty of ways to shore that up. And so 800% magic earth damage, I think, is solid. Uh, 46 magic attack, 39 earth potency. I have no qualms about this. It's even got a sigil boost, which is great and something you don't always find on Lucia. So I think Holiday Revolver is definitely a solid weapon. The next weapon that I think is noteworthy is Rose Musket. And at OB10, 620% magic fire damage, little low, uh, even for stuff that came out in the very beginning of the game, but is enhanced by the fact that as long as you have more than 50% HP, you have up to a high potency magic defense decrease. And I think that's a pretty big deal. The fact that it also has not only fire uh, fire potency on it, but magic ability potency, I think makes this weapon unique and quite good. It also has a sigil boost. And so I think Rose Musket is very good. And, um, you know, kind of, again, Lucia always struck me as kind of like a hybrid character where usually she's not gonna be your main DPS, She's going to be a secondary DPS, but she's going to bring a little bit more that most DPSs don't typically bring in the form of breaches or debuffs, whatever you might have there. Next on the list, we have Marine Shooter. Uh, obviously, I don't have a viable copy of this weapon, but I think that it is pretty useful. 560% physical non-elemental damage to all enemies. I'm not usually a big fan of all enemies, but sometimes it can be really helpful. What's super good, though, about it Physical attack decrease mid potency to all enemies as well for 30 second duration, by the way, and potential for fire resist decrease to all enemies. Um, that I think is very strong when it's needed for all enemies. I mean, you can't beat it. Physical ability potency and fire potency, kind of like the Rose Musket with magic ability potency. I think it's really strong to pair something like this with a fire potency or an elemental potency. And the reason being is because most of the time when you're setting up an elemental damage dealer, 
you get them as high as you can, as easy as you can. But then when faced with something like, well, do I want to raise their elemental potency by like something like, you know, one more tier, which is like the hot top end 10 more percent or give them an ability potency, whether it's magical or physical, depending what they're doing uh, and, and maybe boost that pretty big. Like here, if you had an OB 10, it's going to be 23 right? Half of 46, which is already going to put you at 30% more damage when you're, you know, when your attack stance is, is maxed. And I can tell you that equates to more overall damage than just getting a 10% more on the element that you're trying to do. So for that reason, but normally you're, <laughs> but normally you're trying to use like a whole slot just for this ability and hope that the other R ability is useful as well. The fact that you can have both of these on a weapon like this, um, I think that makes it really good. The fact that it's got the fire boost, which actually pairs nicely with the R ability and a sigil boost, makes this, I think, one of her best weapons. Uh, one other weapon that I do not have that I'm aware that I'm missing is called uh, Nightjar, and that came out pretty recently, I believe. What it does at OB10 is 420% magic non-elemental damage. Additionally, physical defense decrease to a high potency to a single enemy. And if there's a buff granted to yourself, magic defense decrease mid potency also to a single enemy. I think that is quite good too. Uh, not one you're going to be able to pick up, obviously, with a voucher. But for the sake of going over, I think her most noteworthy weapons, there you have it. What would I be going for with vouchers? Again, it's always account dependent, but I'd be looking at things like Bald Eagle if I didn't have it. I would be looking at things like uh, Mad Minute, possibly. Holiday Revolver. I don't remember when Rose Musket came out. I know it was in the spring. It was, you know, I think it was offered during the Easter stuff, which is probably before April. Um, but I, you know, like again, it's kind of hard for me to remember. So I'd most likely be looking at this if I could, Holiday Revolver and Bald Eagle with Mad Minute probably as like a secondary, like maybe a tier two uh, weapon to look for. Again, depending what your account has, if you have all that other stuff, then that's perfectly good. And that's everything I have over Lucia's weapons. Thanks for watching.